I'm going to do a quick uh, recap on latest on using SharePoint Framework in Microsoft Teams extensibility, SPFX meaning SharePoint Framework. Um, and just to recap what the SPFX is and how we use that in Microsoft Teams and what is the latest. We showed some really cool demos last week in Microsoft 365 conference. I'm going to show a similar demo today and we're going to deep dive more detailed on that solution a bit later in the community course as well. Now, let's actually get moving. SharePoint Framework uh, is by far the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions in Microsoft 365. And, and the reason for this one is that it's actually designed for a really easy implementation. So even though the name applies that it's SharePoint Framework and it has the SharePoint, it's not only for SharePoint. It is actually for uh, Microsoft Teams as well, and it's also called Microsoft Vivon. You can actually use it in Outlook. You can use it in Office or Microsoft 365 nowadays as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. But it is a pro development tooling. So you basically need to write some code to be able to make things happen. Um, it has the automatic single sign-on, and the most important thing why it's actually the easiest way to build the enterprise solutions is that it has the automatic hosting. So you do not need to go to the IT and say, hey, I need to have an Azure website or additional things to host my code. No, no, all of your code is automatically hosted unless you want to integrate with Azure, which is absolutely an option as well. So, but it makes it super easy as a developer to build uh, widgets and experiences and extensibility in Microsoft Teams or in Microsoft Viva or in SharePoint uh, with, the, with the framework without the complexity of figuring out who's going to host my code, where is the code being hosted? Um, because development time is one thing, also, the runtime and production time is the second thing. It has the consistent dev experience because it's based on industry standard tooling. You're writing TypeScript and all of that, which is really, really cool. And this is a typical slide which we always include related on SharePoint framework development. Uh, you can build personal apps, team staffs, meeting apps, messaging extension, cards, web parts extensions, and app pages using the exactly the same tooling. And this is incredibly flexible. So you can uh, share the same piece of code across all of the different applications without actually any code changes. So you can even use the same web port as a Microsoft Teams personal app without changing the code. And that's actually pretty mind blowing. So you can maximize the investments within your development to be available across multiple products and multiple capabilities in Microsoft 365. And again, single sign-on automatic code hosting and all of that. Now, today we're going to focus a bit more on the Microsoft Teams. Uh, so what we can be doing in the Microsoft Teams together with uh, SharePoint Framework. And relatively recently, we did announce that we actually support Microsoft Teams applications to be extended also in Outlook and Microsoft 365 app. So as long as you are creating any or using any technology to create a Microsoft Teams app, which is a personal application, it will be actually by default being available also in Outlook or in Microsoft 365 app. And this applies SharePoint Framework, it applies with uh, your Teams, it it's applies also if you're looking into hosting an application, for example, in Azure and surfacing so that within the Microsoft Teams. Um, that application can be easily exposed then also in Outlook and in Microsoft 365 app without any code changes, which is really, really cool. Now, you can mod modify the uh, implementation for sure, but you don't have to. But the application is now exposed in additional locations in Microsoft 365. Now, we talked about bit about already why Microsoft, uh, why SharePoint Framework for Microsoft Teams. We covered main, uh, main points, but basic idea here is that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, we have tens of, almost set the number, we have tens of millions of monthly active users uh, for SharePoint Framework extensibility within Microsoft 365. So rather than you being forced to rewrite something, you can actually extend the existing implementation directly being available in Microsoft Teams or being available within Outlook or Microsoft 365. Or without the need of learning how to do new implementation styles or a new development models, you can use the same model. The same, exactly the same code works directly within Microsoft Teams or in Outlook or in Microsoft, uh, or in Microsoft 365 app as it works in the SharePoint as well. So you can reuse the same solution, the same code across the experiences. Automatic single sign-on is a really, really cool feature. You don't need to worry about that one. Nowadays, that is available also if you are implementing so-called native Microsoft Teams apps, as in the host that's somewhere else than in Microsoft 365. Uh, but it's really re about the simplified operations with automatic uh, optimized hosting because, again, SharePoint Framework gives you a zip file, a package, which I can just send to David and say, David, install this to your tenant and it's production ready. It's automatically hosted in the Microsoft 365. There's no additional complexity with the deployments. Click of a button and we're good to go. And that's pretty mind blowing. Um, 
Now, the latest status with SPFX with Microsoft Teams, uh, so with SharePoint Framework 1.17.x, uh, we are now in 1.17.2, that went uh, live two hours ago. Uh, so that's the latest version. It is using the Teams SDK 2.9.1. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means that it's using all of the latest Teams SDK API capabilities, or almost all of the latest. There is actually a few more newer versions available, but 2.9.1 actually enables capabilities like Live Share SDK. So Live Share SDK and all of those capabilities which are available. That SDK gives additional options of getting access, for example, the context where I'm being hosted, what is the outlook, uh, what is the user, what is the team where I'm being hosted, and you can access that API or use the API server to get that within your code, which is really, really cool. Now, as you start planning SPFX within the Microsoft Teams uh, or within the within Outlook or, or Microsoft 365, you can either uh, use a custom manifest, and that means that you are creating your own Microsoft Teams manifest. You can define the definitions there, or you can auto-generate the manifest file based on uh, deployment options, and that makes it incredibly simple as well. So. If you have an existing web part available within uh, SharePoint, only with the one attribute change in a manifest, you're good to go. No code changes, no nothing. You just add in a JSON attribute, update a JSON attribute within your solution, recompile the code, deploy that to the app catalog, and you're good to go. That's it. There's no additional changes needed within the code, and that's pretty, pretty mind-blowing. Now, as mentioned, all of the SharePoint Framework solutions of Microsoft Teams are also available within Outlook and Microsoft 365 apps. So that is actually incredibly, incredibly cool thing. Now, I mentioned that it's incredibly simple to do this. If you have an existing web part, something which you're using within a SharePoint Online, which absolutely keep on using that in SharePoint Online as well, but if you would like that to be also exposed in the Microsoft Teams, the only thing what you need to do is update in the JSON file, which is the web part manifest, um, the supported host values. So you add a Teams personal app on Teams chat in the supported host, and that's it. You just basically do package my code again, deploy to, to the app catalog, and done you do not need to do anything else. And all of a sudden, magically, that solution, poof, is available in production mode in Microsoft Teams. And that makes it incredibly, incredibly powerful, uh, comparing to the complexity which you might have if you're hosting the website by yourself or you're implementing uh, hosting in Azure, AWS, and then you have a complexity of authentication, all of that stuff. None of that is a challenge anymore uh, if you're using a SharePoint framework. Now, what's also really, really cool uh, is that, as mentioned, uh, there's the native access on the Microsoft Teams uh, SDK. So within the context of your web part, which is no longer really a SharePoint web part because now it's a Microsoft Teams uh, personal application, but in the context of that application or a solution, you can directly access the SDKs and you can access the Teams SDK and you can access information around uh, what the Teams SDK is providing. So you can simply do this .context something dot, 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 and you get access on information which is available within your code. And that's incredibly, incredibly easy as well. Uh, so super easy to use. Now, what's also really, really cool, so just to be clear on this one, Teams, Microsoft Teams Toolkit actually supports SharePoint Framework. And I'm going to show this one today in practice as well. Uh, it's going to be pretty quick and fast demos. We're going to redo a lot of these demos more detailed in the future, but showing you uh, how it can be done. So it's not either or Teams Toolkit or SharePoint Framework. No, no, Microsoft Teams Toolkit actually you can use together with SharePoint Framework. Um, and that simplifies actually Teams development and SPFX with a native F5 debugging super easily within the Teams Workbench, which is a specific debugging option which is available within true Teams Toolkit. I'll show that one in practice, but maybe in Outlook scenario, that's actually pretty cool as well. And you can, of course, use the Teams Toolkit to create multi-tap SPFX team solutions as well. I'm going to show that one in practice in the demo as well. Now, I mentioned this already, but this is incredibly, incredibly cool. So as part of the Microsoft Teams Toolkit v5, there's an improved debugging for SharePoint Framework. So if you're looking into doing a Microsoft Teams extensibility with SPFX uh, with the Teams Toolkit v5, you can just select debugging get start in the Microsoft 365 app or in the Outlook and voila, poof, you have an F5 experience and debugging enabled directly within the Teams toolkit, which is really, 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 really cool. 
Let's have a look on all of this in practice. Um, so let's have a look on a few of the samples and scenarios what I showed here. So this is something what I showed last week uh, in the Microsoft 365 conference. We will go a bit more detail to this sample uh, in the future. Um, we will have actually Paolo Pialorsi uh, joining on this call on Tuesday call uh, in June to deep dive on how this is implemented and all of that and how we can take advantage of things. But as you can see, it's a relatively nice looking web part. We are in SharePoint, as we can see from the top menu, and we can see information like the the, the products which has been sold, or reasons to return. What is re most reasons to be returned is apparently wrong item. Well, that's something we need to fix in shipping for sure. Um, but there's a nice revenue for the company and we can get the details around, for example, the company sales and, and all of that. Of course, this data is imaginary, but it's a relatively typical scenario that the business leadership wants to have a dashboard where, get, where they're up to date on what's happening uh, with their custom experiences and all of that. Now, getting this web part, which is implemented using SharePoint Framework to be available in Microsoft Teams requires only one single change. And it's basically this in the manifest. So this is the implementation. And again, we will open source this, uh, not yet, but pretty soon uh, in June. And only thing what I need to do is just make sure that the web part is actually available also as a Teams personal app or as a Teams meeting app or as a Teams tab. In our case, uh, we are exposing this uh, as a Teams personal app because it's a full screen, not as a tab within a channel, rather as a full screen from a left launcher menu. But basically, I can add that one in. I will save, I will recompile the solution. I recompile and the solution uh, in, in uh, SPFX basically means that I'm just doing call uh, bundle, that's the ship, or I could use the, the Teams Toolkit tooling, or I could use the Viva Connection tooling, uh, Viva Connection Toolkit as well. There's multiple options based on your preference on the tooling. But as I'm doing that rebuilding of the solution, I will eventually get a SPPKT file, and that is the zip file which contains the actual implementation. It contains the code. It's production ready. And that's the beauty of actually SPFX as well. I can send that now to David. I can send that to anybody else or my customer and say, install this to your app catalog. You are production ready, good to go. And that's it. Everything is in within that zip file and everything just magically works within their tenant. Hopefully, again, if they if you don't, haven't done any bugs within your code and all of that stuff, you know, you know how it is. But as I added that Teams personal application uh, in the manifest, what it means is that my application gets automatically available in multiple other locations. So as an example, if I'm in Microsoft Teams, um, I'm in the Microsoft Teams and I can easily access that application in the left menu. In my case, I already pinned that in. So I can access that information directly in Microsoft Teams and this is an SPFX implementation. So it's a Microsoft Teams application built with SPFX and it has multiple tabs and we can we can collect additional information and, and surface information to be available and whatever is your scenario, of course. Um, it, the technology of how, what, Technology, is it SPFX or is it a native Teams app? Doesn't really matter. It's a Teams application which is now available in here. And it's a pretty cool looking application actually. Uh, waiting forward on getting this available for everybody within a community for demos. Now, as mentioned, if it's a Teams app, it's actually available also in Microsoft 365 app. So now if I'm actually in Microsoft 365, I can then go and click apps. And then I can actually access the Contoso Retail dashboard available there as well. And I can access the information directly in Microsoft 365 app. There are people who work mostly on Microsoft 365 apps, so accessing files in here, so they can easily access that information uh, directly from the left menu. That's pretty cool as well. And of course, the same applies then for Outlook. So I can be into Outlook and then I need to go and say, hey, I need to get the information related on uh, whatever our sales were. I could do messaging extension. There's other options as well, but I can also access the information directly uh, from the left menu. And there we go. There's my SharePoint Framework uh, application being exposed directly in Outlook. That's incredibly powerful. Now, the other thing what I wanted to uh, deep dive a bit or show the demo uh, is about the Teams Toolkit. So the Teams Toolkit um, is, uh, has been evolving a lot. So the Teams Toolkit v5 is currently in preview. Let me start here a new window. Um, and the Teams Toolkit is incredibly, incredibly powerful and flexible tool in the creating extensibility for Microsoft Teams. It has a lot of options you can choose to build messaging extensions, bots, and all of that stuff. And if you are building uh, personal applications, you can also use SharePoint Framework in here. And whenever it actually starts up, come on, there we go. I can start from an existing sample. Uh, of course, I can, I can 
basically download an existing sample and start extending from there, or I can start from a new app. And when I start from a new app, then uh, I have a few different options. Uh, this is V5, so I have also the option of creating auto adding here. But in our case, we're going to use start with the Teams notification or application. And in here, we can see the SPFX tab as an option. And if I select that one, it will actually start executing the SPFX Yeoman generator behind of the scenes. It will actually ask me something really interesting, um, which is a nice flexibility for developers as well. So it will basically tell me that do I want to install the latest version of SPFX locally within the my developer solution, or do I want to use globally available SPFX solution, which gives some level of flexibility on what we're using. That will then scaffold us a solution. Uh, which we can super easily do debugging uh, in multiple locations. So here, what I've done here is that I pre-provisioned uh, or scaffolded my project um, because the, the node modules takes a while to complete. But basically, I have a relatively simple uh, web part, which has been now exposed to be a Teams tab, Teams virtual app, and it has uh, additional settings or configurations. The cool thing here is that I can simply, let's see if we can get, actually get this work, let me go to this browser window. I can simply now go to my debugging. Let's actually do a breakpoint. Let's go in here. Where's my code? And let's add a breakpoint over there. And now if I go to F5, I can say that start this SPFX solution in the context of the Outlook workbench. And, and in our case, we're using Edge. So I can just click that one, press F5. And if everything goes well, if we have done the proper preparations for the demo. Drum, drum rolls. Do, 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 it will take a while to compile. It will do things, set up the things, automation behind of the scenes. Teams still gets helping a lot on making things happen. But then we're getting there. There we go. Successfully executed that one. Now we're starting to restart starting things. One more seconds, two more seconds, three more seconds, five more seconds. And fire, fire, come on, come on, Team Toolkit, you can do this, you can do this. Still doing things, now we can actually see that the running server is doing there on the background, that's basically the last markers, local host is running, we are starting to be good to go, it is copying the assets, doing automation, and this is because I haven't actually done that for a while, no, I don't do webpack this moment, here we go. And now I can actually then start testing that within the context of my identity, within the context of my Outlook. It fires to Outlook. And if everything goes well, after a while, there's my code, there's my SPFX solution getting loaded. It will explicitly call out that, hey, you're doing debugging, uh, you are running code which is not part of the Microsoft 365, making sure that people are aware of things and see what happened on the background. We did hit a breakpoint, and on that, as we hit the breakpoint, we can access the information, like all of the details, what's in the context, uh, what's happening, what, what, what's actually happening within a page, what's happening in the code, and all of that stuff. And that's pretty magical. That's incredibly easy, just F5, after I scaffolded the project. I did not do any changes after that, and I can easily test out my solution in the context of Outlook, and now I can actually start implementing my custom implementation. That's pretty cool. It's magic. Thank you, David. Cool. That's it for, for that demo. Thank you.